was about three years ago. On a beautiful Saturday morning, I was behind closed doors, working with 10 high school students. It was an activity by Junior Achievement Foundation called Innovation Camp. And these students come together in the morning, not knowing to each other, and their challenge was finding a problem and create a solution that day and present it in the evening in only three minutes. I was their mentor that day. I didn't touch their creative discussions in the beginning, but they had some really crazy ideas, so I had to touch a little bit. Then I followed up their team dynamics. And in the end, we had a real teamwork, and they presented in the evening a futuristic product, a medical imaging device that you put your coin, and then it turns around you, and then it makes a basic scan and sends it to your doctor. It was a teamwork together, and I really enjoyed helping them. It was really great. Dear Toastmasters, dear guests, do you feel sometimes that you are chasing happiness by your personal pleasure? Are you following up your personal pleasure? Having a coffee with a friend or buy something, buy stuff. Do you do that? I was thinking about this topic recently and after some time I'm really convinced that being happy is a byproduct of being useful. Let me repeat that. Being happy is a byproduct of being useful. I think about this and then I look at my life now. I don't know if you have ever thought about this, looking to your happy moments and how you classify them. Is it about your personal pleasures or do you actually also have some satisfaction, deeper satisfaction by helping others? So for me, for my life, I'm also convinced I'm happier when I engage with people, when I help people, when I'm with people. Tonight I would like to introduce you a lady that I think is a sign of that, the dedication of helping others. And it's a great example, an inspiration to me as well. Her name is Türkan Saylan. She was born... She was born... She was born in 1935 and graduated from medical school when she was 29 years old. It's 10 years time, it's a longer than normal, because she had an illness and she had to lie down in a bed after uh, a long period of time, it was difficult. And when she was 29 years old, she had two kids and she was getting a divorce. And because of the circumstances, she had to leave her kids to the husband. And then she concentrated on her work. And as a dermatologist, she found out that leprosy is an illness in Turkey that is very wrongly known. People don't know it very well. This is leprosy, Juzan. And people think that this is transferable from person to person. This is deadly. And this is not curable. And all these things are actually wrong. So Türkan dedicated her professional life against this illness by visiting many, many places in Turkey and only dedicated working against this illness. She set up a special hospital in 1981, only against leprosy. And by this time she worked 11 years voluntarily on that hospital. By her time, the number of leprosy patients in Turkey decreased from 8,000 to 2,000. So it was a great success. As I said, she visited many towns and cities at those years and she sensed that there might be another area that she can be useful to the society. And that was educational and financial and psychological support to girls who were not able to go to school. She set up an association, all known to us, and with this association, she reached 80,000 girls whom otherwise wouldn't be able to go to school that easily. In my university years, early 19, 1990s, uh, I also worked with this association and I remember some meetings with Turkan herself. I remember vividly, she was very, very much result-oriented. 
What I mean by that? Uh, this is a contemporary place, and there are a lot of ideological discussions as well, you can imagine. But she was not that much interested in internal conflicts. And she was not that much interested at all in our political differences or philosophical differences. She was asking, what did you do today to reach your goal, to reach more girls in terms of financial and psychological support? What did you do and what will you do next? That was how uh, she was working and uh, I really remember her dedicating her life. In one interview she said, when we reached 25,000 girls, everybody said, bravo, bravo, 25,000 girls. But I was thinking, why not 100,000? What can we do to reach 100,000 girls with modern values and financial and psychological support from schools? So, <laughs> I think my work with Junior Achievement Foundation is also rooted by my work with Turkans Association because I like to help young people and I like to see them having self-confidence in this new uh, organization that they know about entrepreneurship, they know about product positioning, they know about sales so that I can see their confidence grew and by doing this I really feel like I'm part of a bigger group I am working for a bigger cause when I say bigger than me <coughs> We are also here in Toastmasters in a group that are bigger than us, aren't we? And I think Toastmasters is a great place for helping each other because we are all helping <coughs> taking roles to our Toastmasters of the evening and we are helping each other with the roles and we are helping the speakers for their preparation and I'm also really enjoying helping you guys when I do that. Recently, I am now a member of another Toastmasters club, and that's an online club. Every Friday, Turkish time, 11 p.m., we come together behind our computers, many, many people from different parts of the world, and I'm sure, nearly sure, that I will not have the opportunity to have a coffee with any of these people, <laughs> but I sense the helping atmosphere within this a place online club as well. And I love their induction ceremony as well, when a new member comes. The uh, President Magda brings two candles, one is burning, and then she uses this one to lit the other one. And then she says, the first candle didn't lose anything by lighting the other one. So helping others is something like this. You don't lose anything, but you actually give others and you feel a satisfaction around it. What can you do now? Not every one of us can be Türkan Sayla. She was a hero. But my humble suggestion would be, start small. And my first humble suggestion is, look at yourself. In what conditions you really feel happy? So analyze it a little bit. So what makes you happy? That is really helpful to understand yourself and actually increase that happiness. Then suggest your boss something that is not in your job description. Just leave a helping hand and see what happens. I got pretty good feedback about this in my career and sometimes I got some weird reactions. However, I'm always happy when I do this. Normally, it's really a good uh, business. Of course, help the old lady with groceries. Don't, don't miss this chance, right? Take someone in your car to the metro station and make a friend. Of course, help your spouse, and my fellow man. Do this more, please. And that, that makes a difference. You can say that. And create a hand collage for your girlfriend. Do something you don't normally do and reach. Why should I reach? <laughs> and you can volunteer. There are many societies that would fit to your values so that you can work voluntarily and help others. And you can have a look. There are really a lot of organizations. And this is another level, but I like this one a lot. Start a business, hire a person, and treat her very well. 
When you do this, these are really small. When you really do this, you feel like your life matters more. And now, please imagine you are <coughs> on your deathbed. You want to say, I existed, not I lived. How can you say that? But you can only say that, but by not only chasing your personal pleasures, not only looking at yourself, but helping others. So, do something about it, anything, tonight. <laughs>